Hello everyone, Elias5891 is out to the grocery store today. So today it's Tim Wei filling in with another Katane module tutorial. Today we're going to look over a module called Simon Stores. This is a very involved module that requires a lot of calculation and a lot of mathematics. So I'm going to put my notepad up on the full screen and have the game in the background. But let's start first of all and see what the module looks like. So here we have a bomb with the module on it. As you can see, the module has um, eight colored buttons around a centered gray button. As you hover over the buttons, they display in the bottom right shows you what color that is. That's for the colorblind people. Also, the bottom and top buttons are always black and white. So the colored buttons around those are the ones that change order. So we will need to write these down. So, uh, as the diffuser uh, communicates to the expert, let's communicate the order of the colors in clockwise order going from white. So we have uh, blue, cyan, yellow, and then magenta, red, green, and then of course is white here and black here. Right, on top of that we also need the serial number, which is here. The serial number is Mike Alpha 9K, Romeo 5. Now, we're not going to look at the bomb uh, for most of this time. Uh, this module consists of three stages. In each stage, we will calculate quite a few numbers. Uh, each stage has an initial value, which I'll call A1, B, uh, sorry, A0, B0, C0. That's what the manual calls them. And then for each color that flashed on the module, we will calculate another value. So let's see what's flashing on the module right now. The gray button flashes in between repeats of the sequence. So we're looking at magenta, green, cyan. Magenta, green, cyan. I need to be careful here because in some cases you can have multiple colors flash at the same time. But I'm glad that in this example we have just single colors so I can show you the uh, simpler case first. So we have magenta, green, cyan. Alright, so let's see what we need to do. The first Thing we need to do is to calculate the initial values which will be a0 b0 c0 i'll start with a0 uh, for a0 we need the th third and the fourth digit of the serial number which is a 9 and a k now we need to interpret that as a two digit base 36 number so that's the same as 9 times 36 plus and now the base 36 value of k, which is the alphabetic position of k plus 9. So it's always the alphabetic position of the letter plus 9. It says 344, so that's our first value. And uh, just for completeness, I'm going to calculate the others too, even though we don't need them quite yet. So with the fifth and the sixth digit of the serial number, we're going to go Romeo, which is 18 plus 9. Multiply that by 36 plus 5. All right, that's the Romeo and the 5. The result we get here is 977. Now, this kicks in. If the value is greater than 364, we want to subtract 365. In other words, it's kind of like modulo 365, except that in, in, the, in later stages when we deal with negative numbers, we do want to keep them negative, but in the range negative 364 to positive 364. Now, in this case, we're just going to subtract 365 and another 365, and we get 247. So that's the actual number that we need here. Then for the third stage, we use the first and the second digit, which is Mike, which is 13 plus 9 times 36 plus the alpha, which is of course 1 plus 9, which is 10. That gives us 802. So we're going to subtract this twice. We get 72. So that's the value here. Now, to calculate each of these three values, we need the three colors that flash. So we have a magenta, a green and a cyan. Let's see what happens. Each of these colors is associated with a function that we're going to need to use to calculate each successive value from the previous. So in this case, the first color is magenta, so we're going to look at this function because we're in the first stage. So we have 3n cubed minus 2x. Now n is the number that's after the a, so in this case n is 1. So this is 3 times 1 to the power of 3, which is just 1 minus 2 times x. Now x is the previous value. So in this case 344. So this is 
mathematically codified here. It says that the next value in the sequence is the previous value of the sequence with the function applied to it. And the function, the correct function that we need is the one for the flashing color. All right, so we want 344. This gives us negative 685. So once again, we're going to do this and we're going to add 365. We now get negative 320. For the second one, we look at green. Green, we have x minus d. Now, what's that d? Well, that's explained here. It's the sum of the individual base 36 digits of the serial number. Let's calculate that. Right from the serial number, we have 13 plus 9 plus 1 plus 9 plus 9 for the digit 9. Then Kilo is 11 plus 9. Romeo is 18 plus 9. And then the 5. That's a 93. Right, so I'm going to write down the D is equal to 93. So for A2, we want to plug this value into this function, which means that we have negative 320 minus D, which is 93. And that takes us below the threshold. So now we need to add 365. We get negative 48. Then the third number is cyan, which is this function here. So we have D, which is 93, minus X, which is the negative 48 from previously, and then minus 8 times N. At this point, N is 3, so we want that. That gives us 117, 117. What do we do with that final value? Well, you might have noticed these values here. These values are 3 to the power of 5, 3 to the power of 5, 3 to the power of 4, 3 to the power of 3, 3 squared, 3 to the power of 1, and 3 to the power of 0. Um, it's no coincidence that these are the powers of 3. What we need to do is we need to convert this to a system that is called balanced ternary. So this deals with ternary, which is kind of like base 3, but instead of the number 0, 1, and 2, we're going to use the number 0, 1, and minus 1. But in order to show you how to actually calculate this balanced ternary, I'm going to do normal ternary first. So how would you calculate this in normal ternary? Well, 243 doesn't fit in there, so we put a 0 here. The 81 does fit, so we're going to put a 1 here, and then we're going to subtract that 81, and that leaves us with 36. Now, 27 goes into 36. Uh, we're left with 9, so 9 goes in there, and so that, that's basically it. So to verify this, we can calculate 81 plus 27 plus 9, and that gives us the 117 that we want. Now, incidentally, this doesn't use any 2s. So this is actually the same as the balance ternary. So the balance ternary is actually 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. In this manual, it tends to use pluses for the ones and minuses for the minus ones. So that's what I'm going to do as well. And on top of that, because we're going to enter the sequence into the module, we are actually going to enter it backwards. So we have to start with the least significant digit. It says that in the manual here, we start with the least significant digit. So we actually want to enter the sequence 001110. But how do we do that? Because, you know, we don't have number pads here. We only have color. So what do we do? This is where this table comes in, the so-called initial correspondences. We're in stage one. So let's take a look at this sequence of uh, colors. Red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow. We now have to check which of these conditions here is true. This is why we needed to write down the colors from the module. So let's see, is the top right button yellow? Well, that would be the one clockwise from white. So that's not yellow, so that's a no. The red button opposite the cyan button. Well, cyan is on the right, red is on the left, so that's a yes. So we need to swap each color with its complementary. So red becomes cyan, green becomes magenta, blue becomes yellow, cyan becomes red, magenta becomes green, and yellow becomes blue. And now we have to keep going. We don't stop at the first condition that applies. The green button is adjacent to the white button. Mm, yes, it is, because it cycles around. So that's a yes. Cycle the primary colors. Um, so red becomes green, green becomes blue, blue becomes red. The magenta button is adjacent to the black button. Yes, that is also the case. So we have to do that as well. Cycle the secondary colors. Cyan becomes magenta, magenta becomes yellow, yellow becomes cyan. The blue and yellow buttons are on the same side of the module. 
Now this is one side, this is the other side. And blue and yellow are indeed on the same side. So we also have to swap B with the color that is opposite in the sequence. Now B is the second last, so we swap it with the second, which is yellow. The red button is on the right side of the module. This is the left side. This is the right side. So that, one's, that one does not apply. The blue button is on the left side of the module. Again, this is the right side of the module. So that's also no. So these are the conditions we have to apply. So this is now the color sequence. And we ma match it up with the digits in this order. So we have to enter. Uh, we, we actually skip the colors where the digit is zero. So we don't care about these. We have to enter a positive cyan, positive green, positive yellow. Now, how do we do this? Well, the first thing the diffuser needs to do is press the gray button in the middle. Then the sequence will stop flashing, but the white and the black buttons um, may light up, right? So you can actually freely switch between the two. We want to use the black button whenever we need to enter a negative number and white for a positive number. It says that here, pressing a colored button while the white button is lit will enter a positive. So in this case, we can just keep it at white and just enter cyan, green, yellow. So let's do that. Cyan, green, yellow. And then we have to acknowledge this input by pressing the middle button. This was correct. Now the same sequence of flashes repeats and then there's an additional flash. The additional flash in this case is magenta and cyan both flash at the same time. So now we have magenta cyan. Now we have to go through most of these calculations again, but with different formulas. So I'm going to remove this, the stuff that we've already used. We start with 247 and we now go through the, uh, uh, the second stage functions. The first flash is magenta, which is this one here. So we do X, which is 247 plus a2, which we've calculated before, that's negative 48, so we just subtract 48, and then minus d, which is still 93, we have 106. Bravo 2 is for the second flash, so that's green, so we look at this formula here, so we take 2 times x, which now is 106, minus a n minus 1. Now remember that n is the number we're currently at, which is 2, so n minus 1 is 1, so we're looking at a1, because it says a n minus 1, not b n minus 1. So the number is negative 320, but we want to subtract that, so I'm going to put plus 320. Uh, that takes us over the threshold, so we subtract, and we are left with 167. 167. The next flash is cyan, so we look at this, 167 plus alpha 1, which is negative 320. That leaves us with negative 153. Now for the fourth one, we have an interesting case because two colors flash. Let's see what happens. We have a two color flashes table here. We're in the second stage. And we now need to check whether this is two primary colors, one primary, one secondary, or two secondary colors. Now in many contained modules in the past, primary colors were considered to be blue, uh, yellow, and red, or red, yellow, and blue. But in computers, this is not the case. The primary colors are actually red, green, and blue. It refers to that by saying additive color mixing. This is the same color mixing that is used by Simon Sens. So we're looking for red, green, and blue as primaries. Now these are not red, green, and blue, so we actually have two secondaries. So we're looking for this formula here. What does max mean? Max means you take the two values here and um, take the maximum, which means the higher of the two values. All right, now what does S3 mean? Well, P3 and S3 refer to the functions corresponding to the respective primary and secondary colors that did not flash. Now, magenta and cyan flashed. So what's the third um, secondary color? Well, it's yellow, because yellow is a mix between red and green. So we, we're actually looking for the yellow function. We want to apply the yellow function to both b n minus 1 and a n minus 1. b n minus 1 is negative uh, 153. So let's do that one first. So we're looking for the yellow function, which is this one here, and we want to apply that to negative 153. So x is negative 153. Then we add a 3 and we subtract 
a n minus one, which is also a three in this case. So by by uh, random chance, we get negative one five three, negative one five three. But we still have to calculate the other value, which is yellow of one seventeen. All right. So all that changes is the value of x. So we put one seventeen here, and then obviously the result is one seventeen. So we want the maximum of those two values, this one or 117. Well, this one is negative, so 117 is the bigger one. So that's our answer for the second stage. It happens to be the same answer as before, so the answer is still going to be um, what we had before, which was this, right? It's 81 plus 27 plus 9, that's 117. So it's still going to be uh, 0 plus 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 0, 0. However, oh no. This is why I got confused. We need to enter them from uh, back to front, so it's actually 0, 0, plus, 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 0. But this time, the sequence of colors is different. Now, instead of RGB, C, and Y, we start with this order here. Yellow, blue, green, magenta, cyan, red. And we have to do all of these swaps again. Swap each color with its complementary. Let's see. Yellow becomes blue, blue becomes yellow. Green becomes... Uh, green becomes magenta, magenta becomes green, and cyan and red also swap. Then cycle the primary colors, so red becomes green, green becomes blue, and blue becomes red. Cycle the secondary colors, cyan becomes magenta, magenta becomes yellow, and yellow becomes cyan. And then swap blue with the color opposite in the sequence, which in this case is yellow. So blue, yellow, swap. So now we want to enter positive blue, yellow, green. Positive is white, which is already pre-selected, but I can click it again. Blue, yellow, green. Blue, mm. yellow, mm. green. And now we're on to the third stage. The third flashing thing is yellow. Now let me make sure that there isn't another flashing color. It was just yellow. Okay, we got lucky because that means it's a fairly simple case. So we want to Start with the 72, do all the same calculations before, except with these functions now. Uh, let's clear this, and let's start again. So magenta is the first function. We have 72 minus 2 times uh, a n minus 1 is a 0, so that's 344. And then obviously we have to uh, put this in range, so we get negative 251. Negative 251. The next one is green, which is this one. So we have negative 251 minus 2 times bn minus 1, which is 106. Again, so because we're now at the second uh, number, n is 2, so n minus 1 is 1, so we're looking at b1. So that's 106. Again, put it in range, negative 98. Then we have cyan for the third one, which is x minus bn minus 1, which in this case is 167, plus an minus 1, which would be negative 48. And this one is just about in range, it's negative 313. Now we have this multi-flash thing, mc, but we're now in the third stage, so it's not this one, it's this one now. So we want the... so s3 we now know was yellow, so what we want is yellow uh, of C n minus 1, which is negative 313, minus S1 and S2 are the two colors that flash. Now notice that because we subtract both of them, the order doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter which is which. Just as long as you do both and you subtract both. So we want this, and we want the same with cyan. All right, let's calculate these in order. So for yellow, we want negative 313 plus b4, which we've calculated before, minus a0, which we've already got. So that's not in range, so it's negative 175. Negative 175. And then we do magenta of negative 313. That's x minus 2 times a n minus 1, because we're currently at 4, so a n minus 1 is 117. And that gives us um, too, too little. So it's negative 182. Negative 182. Now the minus signs here can cancel out, so that's a plus. 
And then we have the cyan function. So we take negative 313 minus bn minus 1, which is negative 153, plus an minus 1, which is 117. That gives us negative 43. And again, the two minus signs cancel out. So we're left with this calculation, which gives us 50. Nice round number. And then finally, the yellow, which flashed. So we still have to apply that. So x is now 50 plus b4, which is 117, minus a0. That gives us negative 177. So for the first time now, we have a negative number. So let's, let's see how we treat that. So if, if it were a positive number, if it were a positive number, 177 would look like this. It, 243 doesn't go in there. 81 does go in there. I'm going to subtract that and get 96. Now that means that 81 will fit in there again. So I'm just going to subtract that twice and put down a 2. Then 27 does not go in because the result is 15. So 9 does go into the 15, which leaves us with 6. And that's obviously 2 times 3. All right, so that's the uh, that's the ternary representation for 177. Now, how do we turn this into balanced ternary? I'm now going to show you a trick which I learned from uh, my friend Zephyr, who came up with this method. It's very clever. We start on the right. The zero stays the same. It's really only the twos that we want to get rid of. Now, in order to get rid of this two, what would happen if we turn this into a minus one? Well, what we've just done is we've subtracted three times this value, so nine in this case. So we need to add another nine to make it the correct value. So we'll add one here. But then that turns that into a two. So now we change that to minus one. And now we've uh, subtracted three times nine, which is of course 27. So we're going to add a 27. And then we do the same thing here. We subtract three times 81 and add that. We now have something consisting of ones, negative ones, and zeros, but this represents the number 177. What we actually want is negative 177, so we're gonna have to flip all of the signs but leave the zero alone. So the correct answer now is negative, positive, negative, positive, positive, zero, except once again we want it back to front. So this is the sequence we're gonna enter. In the third stage, we start with blue, magenta, red, yellow, green, cyan. And unfortunately, I unmarked this by refreshing the page. So swap each color with its complementary. Red becomes cyan. Uh, well, let's do it from left to right. Blue becomes yellow, magenta becomes green, red becomes cyan, yellow becomes blue, green becomes magenta, and cyan becomes red. Then we need to cycle the primary colors. So red becomes green, green becomes blue, and blue becomes red. Cycle the secondary colors. Cyan becomes magenta, magenta becomes yellow, and yellow becomes cyan. And then we swap blue with the color opposite in the sequence. Now blue is the second, so opposite is the second last. So blue and yellow. So now we're actually going to have to use a mix of the black and white buttons. Now remember, white is positive and black is negative. So to remember this, I'm gonna put white, white, black, white, black here, All right? So the first thing we want to do is activate white and then enter yellow magenta. White, uh, yellow, magenta. Then we need to switch to black and enter red. By the way, if this was wrong at this point, we will not get a strike. You only get the strike when you press the gray button in the middle. So white and then blue and then finally black green. And that's the bomb solved. Okay, um, so that, that was the first bomb, the first module. Now I'm just quickly going to go through some of the things that we haven't covered. And for the benefit of that, I'm going to turn off the game so we don't have the background music. Um, so we, we've gone through these functions which you use when a single color flashes. And then of course there are these functions which you use when two, color flash, two colors flash. It's also possible that three colors flash, in which case it's basically the same, except that you check whether it's three primaries, two primaries and one secondary, 
one primary, two secondaries, or three secondaries. And just as before, if it says, for example, S1, right, so in this case, two secondaries flashed, so S1 is one of the secondaries that flashed, S2 is the other one. Again, it doesn't matter which is which because adding them, you know, it's symmetric, it gives you the same answer either way. But if you have any mention of S3, which yeah, in this line you don't, uh, let's see if this one mentions P3. No, it also doesn't. Okay, so that doesn't come up in, in this case. I was going to mention the same as like here, S3 would mean it's the one that didn't flash, but apparently that doesn't exist here. Now, there are a few more uh, functions here. So we've already covered max, which means the higher value of the two. Obviously, min then means the minimum value. Abs means the absolute value. So if you have like, for example, 177 minus 81, and then that would give you a positive value, 96, the absolute value of that is just 96. It's the same value. Right, but if you do the reverse, 81 minus 177, you now get a negative value, negative 96. The absolute value of that would be the positive equivalent, so it would still be positive 96. Right, and because of this, abs of a minus b and abs of b minus a give you the same result. And that's also why uh, you can swap, well, actually, there isn't a case like that, but uh, you get the idea. Oh, there we go, here is a Here's an example. So we have an absolute value of two values that are subtracted, but it's because of the absolute value that the order of the two doesn't matter. You get the same result either way. So that's abs. Then another one that occurs here is mod. That's modulo. If you, if you already know modulo, where it's, uh, it's the same as the 365 thing that we've done, except that modulo 3 just means add and subtract 3 until it's in the range 0 to 2. So with that, I hope you'll be able to solve the module easily now that you know how it works. Uh, it is definitely a lengthy module. So you know, if you're the diffuser and you see this module in the bomb, definitely give this out right at the start and your expert will be busy for most of the bomb. But so now you know how to solve it. So happy diffusing. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, please drop me a line on Discord uh, or um, leave a comment below in the YouTube section. Um, I'll see you again next time with another tutorial video. Until then, goodbye.